My name is Suhani, a student reporter with Invention Convention Worldwide. I'm excited to introduce my guests, Anika, Ella, Sonam, and Tara, who are all sixth graders from Illinois. Their most recent invention, the Smart Recycler, competed at the Invention Convention U.S. Nationals 2023 competition. So welcome, you guys. All right, so I'm going to start off with a pretty basic question. Um, can you guys all tell me what the Smart Recycler was about, the problem it was solving, and kind of the process that you went through to get to the end product? So the overall um, goal that we kind of wanted to reach with the Smart Recycler was to teach people how to recycle properly because a huge amount of the population doesn't recycle or doesn't know how to recycle. So with this invention, we plan, we plan to teach other people who don't really know what is recycling and what is trash, how exactly to recycle properly. Okay. Um, can you guys maybe tell me a little bit about uh, your invention and how it solves the problem that you were looking to solve? Our invention um, sorts trash and recycling using AI and a scanner. So because most people don't know, don't know if which is which. So I think that this was a very big problem that we had needed to solve. Got it. So I know the problem identification process is a big part of invention, right? And I've seen a lot that in inventions out there that there's kind of a catalyst to you guys choosing your problem. So can you guys maybe tell me what inspired me? Was it an event, a person, or just research? In school, we had, um, in tech class, we had to pick something and make a vision out of it. And First, our idea was just to do recycling. We had a passion for it before research. And then after research, we got even more into it. And that's pretty much how it came to be. Okay. So I know you're talking about that um, after research, you kind of got more into it. So is there things that you like found while you were researching or something that shocked you or something that pushed you to work on this problem even more? Um, while we were researching, we found that, like, um, recycling was almost destroying the planet with gases, and people who don't recycle, it's, like, slowly ruining our environment and the world that we live in, and we just wanted to fix that problem. Okay, that sounds great. So, I know you guys have a pretty big group of four, right? So... Can you guys tell me maybe a little bit about how you split responsibilities and things like that? Did you work on everything together? Just um, tell me more about that. So um, what we did for the most part is we consulted each other with everything. We kind of ran ideas by each other. And before we took things to the next step, we made sure that everybody was in agreement and everybody puts their, uh, their ideas towards um, the next steps so that way we can get the best invention possible with um, all of our ideas. Awesome, that sounds great. Um, can you guys maybe tell me a little bit more what it was like working together? Are you guys uh, usually used to group projects? Um, have you Were you guys friends before that? Tell me a little bit more about the whole dynamic, whatever you want to tell me. So we were friends before that. We were in the same class and we all work together pretty well. Um, some sometimes we split up, and we two people worked on something, and the other two people worked, and then we all met together and like fixed it or worked on it together a bit more. And our dynamics as a group were like working together were pretty good because I think we listen to each other, but we also um work well together by listening to each other and um just working everybody's ideas into it that that sounds really great i know it's it's can be hard to work in a group so it's nice that you guys were listening to each other and everything that's important um so i know you mentioned that sometimes you would split off and like two people work on one thing two people work, people work on another thing and then you guys get together can you maybe give me an example of that for example, I'd work on AI with Tara, and then Anika and Sonam would work on the actual like mechanical function of the lids going outwards to open. 
And then we would, like, put it all together and, like, add the code in and it would work. So you're talking about pretty high-level stuff, like AI and the mechanical components. So um, have you guys worked on kind of this kind of stuff before? Or was it stuff you were learning in class and you were applying for the first time? Well, in mm. tech class, um, we had worked with this thing called microbits, which is basically, it's like a circuit. And we used it to just mainly work our whole thing, but also using some wires and stuff to make our invention work. Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, we were learning it in class, uh, how to use a micro bit, and we were starting projects with that. Part of our micro bit like, study was to create the invention, and we had to include the micro bit. And so that's how we chose to use the micro bit in our invention. Tell me a little bit more about Microbit, kind of your experience with it. Um, and I know, I think you guys mentioned this is your first time working with it in class. Well, in class, we had a series of tasks that we were asked to complete with the Microbit. Um, and the Microbit has a bunch of different features like pressure sensors, um, motion sensors. And we had to experiment with all of those and make sure we knew how exactly to um use them and after learning everything that there is to know about the micro bit and its features um we got assigned to create a project on uh, using a micro bit so we decided to use the micro bit to create a trash can lid and we did more research about recycling and how much of the population doesn't recycle and it brought us to the idea of using a micro bit to create a trash can lid that helps the environment. So you guys seem to know a lot about this and some of you seem passionate about it. So I'm wondering, has this experience, anything you worked with shaped what you want to do in the future, um, shown you any glimpse? Well, we, after all the research we did, after learning only 13% of Oh, 13% globally of everyone, like, of the world know how to recycle properly. Uh, we really want to change that. That was the whole point of making the invention. But as of the future, we wanted to start selling it places and getting it into households, the government. Maybe we could do it, like, with some nonprofit or, uh, corporations. And that's where we were heading. And yeah, that's pretty much what we would like to do with the future. Get that 13% much higher than it is as of uh, 2023. Yeah, that sounds great. And I think that could have a really amazing impact on the world. So I hope you guys can do that. Um, I saw that you guys have your patent pending. So you have your provisional patent so far? All right, so how was, tell me a little bit about that process because I know that can be complicated. It can be a little bit daunting. So um, tell me about getting your provisional patent and then what you've been doing since then. For most of the experience of getting the patent, it was mostly researching things that were like the Smart Recycler or close to the Smart Recycler and finding differences about the two just so that it wasn't copyright or copying and it was a lot of how can we change this so it's more different than this other invention that somebody else has made, just to make it more unique to us. So tell me a little bit, um, maybe what sources you used and what that was like, maybe kind of like what new things you found out about, um, if there's anything you guys want to say about that. So after doing research, um for the patent and looking to see if there was anything like it out there on the market. We did find um, one thing that was similar to our invention, but not exactly, um, you know, like it. But the difference with our invention and that invention is that it's worth $8,584, which is a lot more than what we were intending to sell ours for. Um, so, with ours, I feel like we wanted to make ours available to the public, to the government, and just something to have in your household, too. OK, 
Okay, so looking at any of these, so looking at these existing inventions out there and things like that, did that change the view that you had of your impact, maybe how important you felt it was, or um, what you wanted to do with it? Did that change at all? I don't really think so, because we were already really far in the process when we were looking for these resources, but also we also found this like app that like scans it almost but we realized that that's like a little bit different than ours because we were trying because not everyone might not everyone has a phone but like candy on them but we just wanted to like have this invention in like parks or governments or what some of them said nonprofit cor corporations right okay yeah that sounds great just tell me a little bit, uh, maybe each of you can talk about that, what your experience at Nationals was like. Um, was it your first time? Uh, what was your favorite part? What did you enjoy? Um, so it was all of our first time at Nationals. And while we were there, we it was a really great experience. And we were able to see so many other inventions that were beneficial to the world. And we thought that it was just a really great experience to see all the issues that you know face our world and all the inventions and ways that we can solve those problems. Uh, that was pretty similar to what I was gonna say. Uh, yes, it was all of our first times. I think we had a great experience. Um, we got to see lots of other uh, inventions. Some were very cool. And I think it was a great experience for all of us because we learned a lot um, by just looking at others' inventions and we went to go see them and it was a really great experience. I agree with Sonam and Anika just talking about or just seeing everybody else's inventions and how they impact the world and their viewpoint on it and also getting to like see the hard work that they put into their posters and everything and also just being in the Henry Ford Museum was really cool because we got to see inventions from centuries ago like that they made an impact on the world so maybe like our invention could make an impact on the world as well. I agree with all three of them. I think that we all had a amazing experience even though it was our first time. And I think we realized just how far we have gotten with this invention. Just to see like how many other kids there are, I think it was definitely like a shock. I don't think we were expecting it. And also to be around so many amazing invention inventions too, I think that was a pretty good experience. So I know all four of you talked about um, other inventions that you saw. Right. So did seeing any of those other um, inventions change your view about your own invention or about anything else? I know, personally speaking, seeing all of those inventions made me feel like, um, you know, that, you know, I'm not the only one inventing out there and that it's something that's very doable, you know, if you work hard. So um, anything, any thoughts like that cross your mind? I thought it definitely gave us some new ideas to work with. We saw different apps that were being used in different uh, third party websites that were being used. And um, the nationals competition was the day of our graduation of fifth grade. And so we didn't work on it a lot over the summer, but with the ideas that we remembered from nationals, we it definitely made an impact on our um design as it is okay so here you're talking about um what you saw at nationals impact about it impacted your design and everything and i know you guys have the provisional patent so maybe can you guys tell me about kind of what you've worked on so far with those ideas and what you plan on doing um after seeing the ideas we we felt like we could almost make it more technology advanced um, like Sonam said, using different sorts of AI and then also um, making it easier for 
it to go on different sorts of trash cans, just like, so it's universal, so it doesn't just go on one type of trash can, and yes. Yeah. So, yeah, so I know you've been talking about um, that so far you were thinking that the trash cans will kind of go in parks and, and public spaces as well as nonprofits. Um, and then I know you're also talking about the technology aspect, incorporating more technology, and that can be something that gets pretty expensive, right? So did you guys ever have to battle kind of between the balance of um, making it cheaper so it can be in public places available to everyone and adding technology to make it kind of like a better use was that something you had to deal with so with our design right now it cost 25 dollars to make it but with the micro bit shortage it cost 21 dollars to get those micro bits but the price has gone down like a lot since we uh, used our first design and so yes yeah, so the technology we used was on the internet so we didn't have to pay for it uh we used a third party website and the other uh inventions we saw we weren't necessarily thinking of using uh different um technology that we had to pay for we were looking at the other websites because that's pretty much how the scanner worked with the website. And we were just looking for better ones, maybe that were more consistent. And so we weren't really thinking about the cost as much because we weren't thinking about how we would pay for like the website if we used it. Got it, got it. Okay, I, I understand that. I know there's a lot of technology and stuff out there on the internet for us to utilize and we're we're lucky. Um, so, I want to go back to the beginning of your invention a little bit. And I'm wondering if you guys can tell me about kind of the other ideas that you came up with um, and what that process was like, because that's the biggest part at the beginning, right? And I know you're talking about using like different technologies and things like that. So if you guys wouldn't mind talking about that, whatever comes to your mind. Well, in the beginning, we were originally thinking about having it where you pit you have trash and then it like you play you drop it and then it like beeps if you drop it in the wrong one but then we realized that that was a little too complicated i think we had many different ideas about making this but i think the one that we made at the end was a really good one Adding on to Tara, I just also wanted to say that um, we always wanted like some sort of webcam or scanner um, on our invention to tell whether it was trash or recycling. I think figuring out the mechanics of how exactly um, you throw out your trash or dispose of your recycling or garbage was the big challenge that we kind of had to figure out with our invention. But the webcam part was a part of our original iterations. I agree with uh, Tara and Anika. Um, one of our iterations that we had earlier on was doing the full trash can, like having a trash can that would open and close with the lid just connected to it. But once we got into researching stuff that was like the Smart Recycler, we found one that was exactly like it. And we also started to realize that having a full trash can would be more expensive and harder to use in different sorts of public places. Okay, yeah. So, so you guys did think a little bit about cost there, but maybe not when it came to your final design. Um, so I, all, I see all of you are talking about technology. So are there some people that are a little bit more um, encouraged to work with the technology? at all in your group or did you guys kind of just all work together? Uh, we all work together. I think um, when we when it came to the technology standpoint of the invention itself, we all worked together on it as well with as our teacher. She helped us a bit with it to understand it first so we could do it by ourselves to like write the code 
and figure out how to use the AI properly. Um, so I don't think any of us like liked it better almost, but uh, we worked all, all very well on it. Yeah, adding on to Sonam, I think that we all worked really well together and we all understood the technology and what we were doing. Like it wasn't just some of us knew and then the others didn't. We all worked together enough to understand it and know why we're doing this and what we're doing. All right, so let me ask a little bit of a deeper question. And if you don't have an answer for that, that's okay. That's completely fine. But did you guys face any challenges socially at all? I mean, working um, through convention myself when I was, I mean, I started in eighth grade, but um, I was discouraged a lot typically from being like, oh, you can't be an inventor. You know, you're too young and you're not Thomas Edison. I heard that a lot. <laughs> but um, did you guys face any social challenges at all? I don't think we did. Uh, like you're saying, the Thomas Edison thing, we, everyone at invention uh, convention was very like, they wanted us to do well and uh, they were trying to encourage us as best as they can, even if like the one thing wouldn't work on the trash can cover, even like all of our parents, all of our teachers, they were like, it's okay. It'll be better. Like, uh, you guys will figure it out. You guys are great inventors and it'll go somewhere. Even if we thought maybe like, since we didn't win nationals, we thought we were pretty discouraged from that. But, uh, from our friends and family we were in teachers and everybody at invention convention we got the courage back to like know it'll be going somewhere yeah that's really lovely i know everyone at invention convention is pretty um encouraging and things like that everyone's really kind because you know everyone's kind of learning this process right so can you guys maybe tell me, speaking of process, maybe what were the hardest and best parts of the process? I think definitely like learning how to uh, make things like, make things actually work because we faced many technology problems, especially with internet. And sometimes the code was completely right and it just didn't work. And we definitely had to work through that, but I think in the end, we got it to work. Like even when we went to nationals, uh, it was still a little bit malfunctioning, but we were able to make it work. Like Tara said, um, the technology stuff was really challenging to figure out. I think one of the hardest parts about um, inventing our invention was the code because we had to figure out how exactly the computer would um, connect with the the code would, uh, how exactly the micro bit would work with the code. So figuring out what code to use and how exactly we should code the micro bit was definitely one of the hardest parts of this project. I agree with both uh, Tara and Anika. Just that uh, the technology aspect of this project was challenging because in the past we hadn't worked with technology a lot. So this was the first year that we were really learning how to work with micro bits and coding. So that was hard. Um, also, just making sure that it worked consistently was tough. But I felt like the best part was just seeing it all come together in the end after all our hard work and seeing it work for the first time. I also agree with everyone, everyone, just more specifically, every time we were going to work on the invention using the AI scanner, uh, how it worked was we would put the picture up to the camera and then it would tell you if it's trash or recycling and then that side would open but every time we had to program it uh the same way like redo it every single time not because it was wrong but because there was no way to save it on there and we had to um take the pictures and take new pictures every single time and put it back up there and that was pretty frustrating since we didn't know how to like save it and it took a bit of time every time we get to like practice with it and stuff um but otherwise like the technology we understood the codes and stuff which was like the most important part so 
No, I know that can be incredibly frustrating, especially when it's just like busy work, you know, put it back in there and let it load again. Um, and I'm and I'm glad that you guys all got to understand the technology aspect, though, because I know in a lot of inventions, when people take an expert's help, um, including me, sometimes they don't fully understand what's going on, you know. Um, but it can really help to move forward because I know you guys were talking about putting it on the market to understand what's going on so you can expand it and change it. So you guys had talked about pretty awesome experiences and in invention convention, and I hope that you would recommend other people to do it as well. Um, if you wouldn't, maybe this isn't the right place to tell me. <laughs> but um, tell me a little bit about why someone should join invention convention. Why would you say, you know, this is a good program I think you should compete to? I think you someone should join in Magic Convention because it's a great experience to learn more and more about other problems around the world and solve your own problem. I also think that you can not only learn from resources and stuff that you didn't know before, but also just having fun and experiencing life. I also think that it was a really great uh, experience. And it was really inspiring to see the way that everyone has approached these different problems that we have in the world. And I'm definitely inspired by the whole Invention Convention experience. And I bet that a bunch of other people who were at Invention Convention were also inspired by everyone who was there and all the inventions and problems that we have solutions to. Gotcha. All right. Are you guys thinking of maybe competing later in middle school or in high school? Um, any plans for future inventions? I think that um, maybe we could try to go to invention convention again, just having more knowledge on different topics in the world. Or as the economy like changes, we could find more problems to do an invention on, or we could just keep working on the Smart Recycler and make it more technically advanced while technology is getting, like, newer. Especially with um, AI um, advancing, changing um, the way that our webcam sorts trash and recycling is also something that we could probably work on um, with uh, artificial intelligence and different websites and programs. Yeah, so signs you guys sounds like you guys have some great plans to improve your invention and maybe move to market, right? You guys think that maybe that's something you'll consider doing um, by the time you maybe you graduate middle school, high school. I think definitely in the future this will like come up as oh, we made this, we made this. And, oh, we made it to nationals or something like that. But I think that we will definitely, what Ella said, um, take this into consideration about the making it more advanced as time goes on because we already know that technology is getting greater by the year. So just seeing what comes next is. Yeah, I hope I can see you guys at nationals at some point. I always try to make it come and see everyone's inventions. So hopefully I'll be able to give you some high fives and say, great job, you made it again. <laughs> Any hoorays about we love Invention Convention, everybody should join. Yeah, you should join Invention Convention. It's really fun and you'll have a great experience there. <laughs> yeah, all right, that's the energy we like to see. Invention right. Convention is really great. And if anybody, if you're considering doing it, I would definitely go for it because it's, really inspiring and it's just a really great program that you can immerse yourself into. I really love to hear that you guys. All right. Um, on behalf of all of us at Invention Convention Worldwide, thank you Anika, Ella, Sonam, and Tara for joining me. Um, be sure to check out other student inventor in interviews on our YouTube channel. Until next time.